well. It's a Monday morning, and I'm happy to announce our guest speaker this morning. She is no stranger to us, and we just love her, as she just have us have a, sire, a fireside chat. And I love her trainings. I love her videos, and she has it all put together. She hails from the Southern California, has a house up, up in the mountains up north there. Yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous, too. Uh, I understand I got a private airstrip up there. Hey, listen, I want to thank her for, for taking time out. You know, she was a single mom for many years. Uh, met a gentleman by the name of Tony and, and they got married and started. He had a construction company. She was in the beauty. She, as a matter of fact, I was trying to grow my hair out so she could probably do my hair, but she is a wonderful lady, a great trainer, a good leader. And I can't say, I mean, I, there's so much more I can say about her, but let me get out of the way and let her get in the way. We'll get you guys some fed today on some great knowledge. Without further ado, Regional Vice President Platinum, the one and only Miss Jocelyn Dristel. Good morning. <laughs> it's so awesome to see all those beautiful faces out there uh, in uh, what do you call it? Zoom land? <laughs> Not zoo land, zoom land. Um, but Mr. Thomas, thank you so much for having me. I cannot believe that this is the last week uh, for me that you'll hear from me. It's a short month, 28 days in the month. And next Monday is the first. Crazy, huh? March 1st next week, seven days. So you guys have seven days to get all of that that Mr. Lewis just talked about. Go make it happen. It can happen in a couple days for you. So go get a new IBO and help them have success and you'll just have success. So I'm just I'm just grateful to be here. Mr. Thomas, you're such an, uh, an amazing leader, a phenomenal friend of ours. Uh, we truly appreciate you. Again, there's not, we could go on and on for each other. So, um, because we truly have such mutual respect and um, admiration. And I'm just grateful for every opportunity given by Mr. Thomas. Uh, I sometimes I have to pinch myself. I think it's unbelievable that I'm actually asked to be on a leadership call of his and I, I don't take it lightly. I have spent time and effort uh, and energy putting into our um, trainings like every single other trainer that he has and I know he knows that. Uh, so Mr. Thomas, thank you so much for everything that you do. Truly appreciate you. So, and also Mr. Jabri Clemens, again, I'm gonna give you kudos cause you just are such an, a phenomenal individual and truly grateful for everything that you do. Cause you provide, <laughs> when we ask you provide and it's like, you're like that. I don't know how you do it all, but you do it all. And I'm grateful for you uh, truly. So thank you. So again, welcome everyone. It is Monday morning, ready to start our week. I started it yesterday, um, but I am going to dive into a conversation that hit me about Tuesday of last week. And then I kind of pondered over it. And um, as, you, as many of you know, God kind of directed the whole path and it really brought it together. So I'm actually going to read just a couple things from Mr. Les Brown. You got to be hungry. How many of you have this book? If you have it, have you read it? <laughs> because it's a phenomenal book and diving back into it. And it's so crazy because I've had this book sitting right beside a chair that I sit in because um, I pick it up here and there. And I was working on this training because of a video you're going to see. And it all tied together, of course. And it was all about being hungry. Uh, it's a, it is a message that I want every single one of you. So you all know, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe or, uh, you know, my God is my God and I know where I look to and how I've had success. And so I just come from the authentic perspective that I'm sharing with you, how I've taken my journey, um, how I'm fed, how I get my energy, how I, you know, step into my day. Th these are all things that I do. And so I share them with you. So I hope that each of you take your own piece from what I have to share for you. And it's going to tie because I truly believe this is what I do know. I know this, and Mr. Thomas knows this too. 
the Bible is all about leadership <laughs> and it is 100. Mr. Williamson talks about it all the time in his messages. It truly has so much leadership in it. And many of us read it, but we don't apply it. You know, as Mr. Thomas always says, be doers of the word. <laughs> don't just read the word, be doers of the word, but that's anything that you read. I don't care if it's the Bible or if it's a, you know, a self-help book or it's a health book or whatever it is, you have to do it. it you, you can't just feed yourself and then not apply it. So I'm going to dive in here. Uh, again, my title is Hunger Games, but uh, you'll see that in just a second. And uh, this is what I'm going to read from, okay? So this starts off his book. You've got to be hungry. So I'm going to read from something that actually truly ties in to the video you're going to see. Uh, and this is uh, from Matthew 5, 6. This is how he starts his book. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled, for they shall be filled. So then it goes on to say, it must be it must be born in mind. This is a quote from Dr. Benjamin Mays. It must be born in mind that the tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. So we talk about goal setting all the time and setting goals to have a target to hit. If you don't have a goal, you don't have a target, right? So it's, he talks about the tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It is not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideal, but it is a disaster to have no ideal to capture. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Not, a fail not failure, but low aim is sin. And that is the quote from Dr. Benjamin Mays. So uh, Les Brown goes on and says, don't become buried in treasure. And we've mentioned this before, but I'm going to read it. Imagine this. You're on your deathbed and standing around your bed are the ghosts of the dreams and ideas given in your, in, to you throughout life. Imagine that for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never use those gifts. Imagine they're all, they are all standing around your bed with large, angry eyes looking at you, saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life, and now we must die with you forever. That's Dr. Howard Thurman. So the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what gifts, what inventions, what innovation, what voice, what story, you hear me talk about your voice needs to be heard. What story would die with you? I want you to write that question down. If you died today, what dreams, what ideas, what gifts, what inventions, what innovation, what voice did you not share? What story would die with you? So Les goes on to say, as I mentioned in the preface, and we didn't read that, I began writing this book in 1997. We're in 2021, and he published it, I think it was 2019. <clears throat> 2020 is the copyright. So <clears throat> I didn't just walk away from writing this book 21 years ago, though. I started and paused I started and paused the work on this book several times throughout the years, and I feel exactly what he's saying, because you guys all know I'm writing my book, and I stop and start it and pause it, <laughs> but this is what he says. As a matter of fact, my life was writing the pages of this book the entire period. So this that whole period, he, would, he had kind of put it aside. God was writing the book. And it was going to come out at some point, but you have to get it out. However, one night, let's see, back for entire period. However, one night while out eating dinner, I knew that it was finally time. So it just was put on his heart to finally finish it. You see, upon tasting the food, I was instantly reminded of a meal that I had eaten years ago that had been prepared by my best friend, Alexander Wims. They call him Bo. Cooking came naturally and easily to Bo. Even though Bo was very nonchalant about his gift of cooking, he refused to share any of the recipes with anyone. He guarded them like treasures, and they were. 
because he always said that one day he was going to write a cookbook. One, there's the keyword, one day. I encouraged him to do so, telling him that I would even write the forward as a witness to his skills. <clears throat> Everything Bo cooked was uniquely delicious and amazing. We all begged him to share just one of the ingredients he used, but he would never tell any of us, not even me. Eating that meal reminded me of being at Bo's funeral. As I was leaving the cemetery, a mutual friend approached me. She asked me if Bo had ever written his cookbook. Sadly, I had to tell her that he hadn't. I can so clearly remember her reaction. She responded with such deep disappointment. OMG, he took that with him. He took all of that with him. The never to be seen cookbook and all those incredible recipes died with Bo. I have the chills. Whew. Remembering that moment made me decide to refocus my energy on writing, you've got to be hungry. I know firsthand that tomorrow is not promised. As I tell my family often, we can't get out of life alive. <laughs> we cannot get out of life alive. All of us have an expiration date, and I decided that I was going to complete this book before mine arrived. Dr. Miles Monroe, which was a great friend of uh, Les Brown, the great pre preacher and orator said, the wealthiest place on the planet is not in the far east where the oil is in the ground. It's not South Africa where there are diamond mines. The wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. And I'm, we've talked about that before. For there you will find leaders who have never stepped up. Leaders, leaders, it's time to step up. Innovations the world has never been exposed to. Talent, and here's the word, potential never realized. Whew, think about it. I am reminded of another man who said, oh God, to reach the point of death only to realize you have never lived only to realize that you have never scraped the surface of your potential. I remember reading about a woman who had just left the doctor's office after having been told she had terminal cancer. She made herself a cup of coffee when she returned home. As she sipped it, she was suddenly filled with rage and hurled the cup against the wall, shattering it into pieces. As she threw it, she screamed out, I refuse to die an unlived life. Why don't you throw this coffee cup against the wall and refuse to die an unlived life? Because I am. <laughs> I'm refusing to do that. The truth is everybody dies, but not everybody lives. The truth is everybody dies, but not everybody lives. People are born full of hope, wonder, and dreams. Hey, as a child, you have all that. We've all lost our childlike wonder sometimes. You gotta get it back, remember those dreams. But then life happens and those dreams are beaten out of them. I believe most people are unprepared for adversity and therefore change directions. Instead of moving toward their dreams, they begin to move toward the grave. Ooh, honest. Instead of moving toward their dreams, they begin to move toward their grave long before they breathe their last breath. Maybe that is why one poet said, many a flower has bloomed and wasted its sweetness on the cold desert air. Let me be totally honest with you. On the path to your dreams, there will be many interruptions. You guys all know that. We've talked about it. Every leader who shares uh, testimonies and, and trains, they'll tell you about all the challenges, obstacles, and interruptions. When you get on an airplane, remember the flight attendant announces that you must fasten your seatbelt in preparation for the inevitable, inevitable turbulence. How many of you had turbulence in your life? Mr. Thomas, how much turbulence have you had in your life, <laughs> right? Think about it. Is this, it is the same way with life. You must fasten your mental, emotional, and spiritual seatbelts because you will experience turbulence. The only way that you can break through the atmosphere and reach higher altitudes is 
I'm going to say it again. Here it is. This is this is this is the message today. The only way that you can break through the atmosphere and reach higher altitudes is by being hungry. Hunger is the most crucial element of creating your greatest life. So that's as far as I'm going to read in Les Brown's book, because that's where my next uh, video takes takes off. And it's only about six and a half minutes. Uh, it is back to Dr. Darius Daniels, which I listened to a couple weeks ago when this message came to me and I'm thinking I got to build a, a leadership conversation around it. And then my hunger book came and it all tied together. So I'm going to go in really quick and share this. And then we're going to come back and have some conversation about these two things. Oops, hold on one second. Here we go. So it's called Hunger Games. You got to be hungry. Here we go. our appetite. Watch this. So we started things we couldn't finish because we weren't hungry enough. And we put things on our plate that was too much for us to handle because we weren't hungry enough. And we bragged to others about how we were about to demolish this food, but we could not execute on our intention because we weren't hungry enough. And I started thinking about that thing. And I saw how that experience can be exegeted and utilized for this sermon because as it is with food so it is with life there are times in life watch this where we put things on our plate that are too much for us to handle because we're not hungry enough and there are times in life where we start things that we do not finish because we not hungry enough and there are times in life where we tell people I'm about to demolish these goals demolish these dreams accomplish this agenda and we do not execute our intention because our eyes are bigger than our stomach doesn't matter how good the food is the future is the dream is whether we experience it or not it's going to be based on our hunger and I want to pause for the cause as we conclude this series on beast mode and tell somebody hunger matters yeah, the lion is the animal that we've been using as a metaphor in a meaningful way, hopefully, and as an example of what it means to be the best version of ourselves. And I want to tell you something about lions, family. A lion is strong. A lion is fast. A lion is agile. But watch this. If a lion's not hungry, a lion won't fully utilize its abilities and capabilities to the maximum of its potential. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to say that one more time. A lion is strong. That's important. A lion is agile. That's important. A lion is fast. That's important. But what causes the lion to utilize the gifts that are on the inside of it is the hunger. The hunger drives the gifts. And some people are wondering, why am I gifted but not going anywhere? Right? Why, why, why is my talent significant yet my life feels stuck? Because gifts and abilities lay dormant and they can actually be dysfunctional if you don't have hunger. Hallelujah. That will push you to take advantage of developing and utilizing your gifts. Hallelujah. And, and, and I believe, I believe some people who may be watching this message or listening to this message right now, as I'm talking, you and God are having a sidebar conversation. Yeah, I'm preaching and he's speaking to you. He's all up in your Kool-Aid. He know the flavor because he's letting, he's bringing to your memory and to your mind, all of the gifts that are in you, all of the dreams he's given you. You don't have a dream deficit. You got dreams. You don't have a vision problem. You got vision and you don't have a talent problem. You got stuff on the inside of you you don't even know is in there yet you, you've got gifts and abilities and acquired skill you hadn't even tapped into yet maybe the issue isn't a gift maybe what God's trying to do in 2021 is to get you hungry 
Did you hear what I said? See, there's a difference between being hungry and feeling like I can eat. And many of us have been living in a I can eat season. And that I can eat season got you to where you are. But the I can eat mentality cannot get you to where you need to be. You got to go from I can eat to I'm starving. Hallelujah. Yeah, you got to go from I can eat to I'm ready to demolish something. You got to go from I can eat to where you're dealing with the irritability. That's a consequence of your fam- of you being famished and hungry. Hallelujah. I'm praying for a holy irritability to come over you. Yeah, I'm playing that game. God would make you agitated with average and that he would irritate you to the degree that you feel like I'm moving from I can eat to I'm hungry. Hunger matters. Isn't this what Jesus says in Matthew 5 when he says blessed are those No, 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 no. Don't miss it. He didn't say you hunger and then you are blessed. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. No, no, no. Are you following me? He says, blessed are those who hunger. If you got hunger, you blessed. Did you hear what I'm saying? He's, he says, he says, no, no, blessed are the, he says, you blessed. You're blessed if, if you got hunger. That you, because those that are hungry are those that will be filled. He says, I'm going to feel based on your hunger. I, okay. Some of us are observing the activity of other individuals, right? And, and you're seeing, uh, see, there are some individuals you observe, watch this, and God calls you to admire, but not desire. Then there are other people that God causes you to observe, like Panina and Hannah, right? Like Panina for Hannah, where God says, no, 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 I don't want you, this, I'm using this to motivate you for your miracle. Yeah, yeah, I, I showed you this over here, just so you can celebrate what I'm doing for them. But I'm showing you this over here to inspire you for what I want to do for you. And some people are watching other people achieve and advance and accomplish their assignment. And you're like, how in the world can they do all of that? Because they're hungry. There it is. Because they're hungry. (laughs) You guys, I'm going to. I'm going to preface what I'm going to go over some of the things that he said, because we need to point out some of this stuff. And I hope some of you, because many of you here, you're just in the, I can eat stage. I can eat. I'm good where I'm at. <clears throat> I Maybe you don't feel good where you're at, but you can eat, but you're not hungry. And that's why you're not getting out and getting the results. You're not inspired by the other people because you're comfortable, even though you're actually uncomfortable. You're comfortable with there's some money coming in or my spouse is creating the income to to, uh, get us through and we can eat. But you're not tapping into your potential and what you're capable of and you're not agitating your average why are you staying average you're not created to be average you gotta tap into that potential and it takes hunger stop settling for just eating so let me i'm going to tell you something he started his message off about the pool of the Bethesda. There's a pool of Bethesda, right? And, and it's in John. Okay, it's in John. You can go read it. I'm just going to tell you something. The pool of Bethesda is a healer, and it heals at certain times, uh, uh, seasons. Okay? And there's a man. There's a man in that pool, uh, by that pool. And literally, I don't even think he's feet from, a, a foot from the pool, the edge of the pool. I think he's inches from the edge of the pool. 38 years 
He sat by that pool and never got in to be healed. Jesus walks up, up to him and he says, do you want to be healed? Well, he's there because he wants to be healed, but he didn't move. He says to Jesus, I'm trying to get in the pool. How many people have, do you, how many people do, use the word or you hear the word try? You either do it or you don't do it. Try is not a word. It is a word in the dictionary, but we got to stop using the word try. I'm trying, I'm trying. He, it was edges from that pool for 38 years. And God just said to him, do you want to be healed? And he said, I'm trying. I've tried to get in, but someone else got in before me. Oh my goodness. How many people have done it before you while you're sitting there looking at the pool? He could have gotten in that pool from the first year, not 38 years later. Oh my goodness. So I had to focus on that for a second because how many years have you been waiting to get into the pool, stepping into your ACM business and knowing that you can ignite the dreams, the goals, all those things, but you're missing the hunger because you're settled for I can eat. So let's talk about some of those things. So he says, very often when there is absence of hunger, most often it's because you're filled with something else. You're filled with complacency. You're filled with, we're just okay where we're at. You're filled with, I wake up in the morning and I know, you know, food's going to be on the table or I'm settling for this because I just don't think I can do it and I'm okay. So we don't, we waste all day and we don't do anything on our goals. And that's because we don't even set the goal. What's affecting my appetite? Well, you have to readjust your appetite. You have to get the junk out. You, we all have so much junk that's been piled on us over the years and it's junk food and it's in your, it's in your stomach. It's in your heart right? Your arteries are being clogged up by the junk food, which is all the yuck out there in the world that, that, is, that is taking over. You got to fight back. I talk about fighting back all the time. You are stuck. We are stuck. Whoever I'm talking to at the pool of Bethesda, sitting there all these years, not tapping into your potential, not getting in the water to be healed, letting somebody else go before you because it was just easier to sit there. Remember when he said, have you started things we could, did you start something you didn't finish? Because maybe you gave up, your hunger wasn't there. Just like he started to walk over to the, to, to get himself into the pool, but he didn't go. He stopped for 38 years. All because we weren't hungry enough. We didn't execute our intention because our eyes were bigger than our stomach. <laughs> I love how he uses that analogy, but you got to think about what he's really saying in that message. He's not saying you bit off more than you can chew. He's just saying you're not hungry enough. Your stomach isn't growling at you like that lion. It doesn't matter how good the food is, right? ACN. What kind of food is ACN? Lifestyle, freedom, all the things that Mr. Thomas has experienced. And guess what he had to do? He had to move into the truck. Hey, we're in a, hey, did you move by us? Cause we're, we have trucks. <laughs> he moved into the truck community, got out of the Rolls Royce and the, the Mercedes community, you guys. Cause he's hungry enough to go do something and get into the pool. Get uncomfortable. I'm just saying, you guys, think about it. So it doesn't matter how good the food is. Like ACN's food is so good. But the future, it doesn't matter how good the food is, ACN, lifestyle, freedom, how good the future is, 
how good your dream is, whether we experience or not, is based on your hunger. Hunger, write it in big caps, like put it on your dream board. Hunger matters. It matters. He talked about the lion and how the lion is a metaphor for being the best version of ourselves. So you say you're a lion, but are you becoming the best version of you that God created you to be tapping into your potential? See, lions are strong. Lions are fast. They're agile, as he talked about. But watch what he said. A lion is not, is not hungry. A lion has to fool. So if a lion is not hungry, he says, he has to fully utilize its abilities and capabilities to the maximum of its potential. Or he doesn't eat. He won't eat. He has to be hungry and he'll die out there. Your hunger drives the gifts. So he talked, he shared this. Some of you are wondering, um, I know I'm gifted. I know I have talents. I know God blessed me with things that I could do. You know, just like this me of writing my book or, uh, you know, I'm working on this big dream and Jabri knows a little bit about it of, of a brand that I have. And it takes time and effort and I have to be hungry to, to complete it, to get through it along with my big goal of SVP COC. I'm hungry enough to get there and I will because I keep stepping into the pool for the next healing, for the next healing. I move myself that way. But you can say, I know I'm gifted, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not advancing. My talent is significant. Your talents and your potential is significant and the world needs you. ACN needs you but my life is stuck at the pool of Bethesda. It's laying dormant or dysfunctional because you don't have the hunger that will push you to take advantage of developing and utilizing your gifts. Are you, are you or are you having this like tug? Like, as he said, I'm tugging on like the, the juice. What did he talk about? The Kool-Aid, <laughs> right? Are you, are you, is it tugging at your heart with this message? If it is, it's for you. It's for you. Are you, uh, let's see, let's talk, let's see, where did he go here? Uh, you are, you are seeing all the gifts he has given you, all the dreams. You don't have a dream deficit. You don't have a vision deficit. It's not a problem. The vision isn't the problem. It's the hunger. That's the problem. You even have stuff on the inside of you that you don't even know is there yet. I didn't know there was a book inside of me, but he'll show it to you. And then you have to believe it's real. You haven't tapped into your potential yet. I believe God is trying to do in 2021 for you, for you, for you. Let's, let's point out people for you, Pat, for you, Judith, for you, T. Letitia, Natasha, Celia, Jabri, you guys, for you, Celia, Ishmael, for you, Belinda, Mary, Jenny, Heather, Kathy, Dave, for you. Hungry, are you hungry? There is a difference be between being hungry and feeling like I can eat. That's sur either surviving or you're thriving. You're either just surviving or you're thriving. That's the difference in your hunger. Many of us have been living in a I can eat season. Your e eat season got you to where you are, but it's not going to get you to where you're going. Do you want to go? Like, I think you have to ask yourself that question as he, as God asked him, do you want to get well? I'm asking you, do you want to get well? Do you want to go? Do you want to go with us? Do you want to go with Mr. Lewis? Do you want to go with Mr. Thomas? Do you want to go with me? You got to get up and get in into the, the, Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda. It's about going from, let's see where, <coughs> lost my track. Hold on one second. 
Uh, it is about going from I can eat to I am starving. You're famished, right? So you, your starving is I am ready to demolish something to where you are dealing with the irritability. This is what he says, the irritability that's a consequence of you being famished. Are you famished yet? Some of you don't even know if you're famished, you've been there too long. I pray he makes you agitated with average. I told you, get those, that average out of you. You're not created to be average. He, uh, that he, he would irritate you to the degree that you feel like I can move from I can eat to I am hungry. Again, he says hunger matters and he goes into the Matthew 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, for they will be filled. You have to be hungry to be blessed. It's in, it's in the Bible. It is a leadership conversation. You have to be hungry to be filled and blessed. It comes first. The blessed doesn't come before the hunger. You're watching people and seeing their achievements. You see them every day. People achieve, people hit RVP, people hit RD. It happens every single day in ACN, but it's not happening for you. He talks about Panina and Hannah. Those achievements are to inspire you, not to degrade you, not to demotivate you, not to make you look at yourself and go, why can't I? It's saying, I, if they can, I can. If they can, I can. And the reason they could is because they were hungry. They got blessed and filled because of their hunger. They went after it. They did the things that it took to get to there, to get to RD. If you, if you can get to ETL, you can get to RD. It's just doing, creating ETLs over and over and over again in your business. You become RD. To become RVP, it's helping other people go RD, but you just win RD, so you'll be RVP because you can show other people how to do it. And to get to SVP, I just like me, when I look at it, I got to help other people get RVP. And the more people I help get to RVP, I'll become an SVP. And guess what happens when you, to become a COC? The more people you help, the more uh, you're helping others, that serves at a higher level. I always tell you that's the highest form of love. That's why Mr. Thomas has been COC, 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 because the more people you help, you'll become a COC. It, it all falls into place because you just got to get into the pool and you got to be hungry enough to crawl into that pool. If you have to crawl, fine, crawl, get there. So People are achievements are not to dis, to make you feel bad. They're to make you feel good. That's why you need to set goals. People get all dis, discombobulated about setting a goal. And then they're like freaked out if they don't hit it. But hey, you're just closer and you have a target to hit. Just get in the habit of setting goals. So let it inspire and ignite your hunger. Why are you allowing the enemy to take your mind in the other direction? Because at the end of the day, I will tell you, it's all a distraction. And the distraction doesn't come from above. It comes from somewhere else. And you got to take back your life and you got to activate your potential and you got to go into your day hungry. I don't know, don't eat in the morning and feel those hunger pains. And understand that those hunger pains, even though it's because you're hungry and food wise, that's the feeling you need to have in your heart, that you're hungry, that you're determined, that you're gonna go feed your family, not just eat for yourself. See, I think we, start, we, we focus on our own hunger and we forget that we'll, con we'll get that hunger by helping other people feed their families, to help them do more than just eat, to help them realize their potential. So you have to unlock your potential and you got to be hungry. Say it to yourself, I'm hungry. <laughs> Come on, say it to yourself, I'm hungry.
Are you hungry? You want to do more than just eat? No more of this. No more sitting back and starving. It's time to it's time to go out and take it and get in the pool of Bethesda and heal you and move. Time to move, people. Time to move. So you got to be hungry. Mr. Thomas, I turn it back to you. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for the month of February to be here with all of you as I will continue to join you. But I appreciate having the platform to share. And I hope someone got their word. Well, dear, we got to get you. We got to get you back. We got to get you back in the month of April. We got four, four Mondays in April. April 5th. Can we get you back in April? All right. Yeah. Listen, you got to be hungry. Hi. Mr. Les Brown says that you got to be hungry. Matter of fact, Mr. Les Brown's birthday was last Wednesday, the 17th of February. He turned 76. He turned 76. Yes, yes, yes. I remember he came out to watch me do a seminar when I did uh, for my previous network bar company down in Palm Desert. And uh, he came to watch me. And I thought that was I was honored by that because he was down the street finishing up his uh, segment. But the Hunger Games, can we give Miss Drowsy Bristol a hand today? I mean, what a powerful message. The Hunger Games. Are you hungry? Number one, what I got, if you die today with your gift still inside you, what did you accomplish? Don't let that be. Get them out. Get them out. Get them out. Remember the story of the guy with the, with the cooking? Number two, everyone dies, but not everyone lives. I want you to live. Live. There's a pastor that I can think of who passed away up in Chicago. He says, you must live. You must live. Number three, she said, the only way to reach higher altitudes is become hungry. See, a lot of you are so complacent. One last time you boo, five, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you ain't went nowhere. You're still stuck and you're so just stuck. Oh, let me shut up. Number four thing that Miss Dallas Bristol says, hunger matters. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? Too complacent. Uh oh, there's that word, complacent. I'll say it again. Complacent. Let me tell you something. Al Thomas has been hungry. I had to relocate, had to dance. Yeah, yeah, I went for a yeah, yeah, neighborhood. First time I ever lived in a place that had gates around it. Hey, because why? I'm hungry. Look, I'm the first one to show you. If I can do it, what, what's wrong with you? Because like she said, you're sitting there and you're content. Mm -hmm. My wife won't let me move. My Yeah, right. Woo, you must. She also said this. <laughs> you... <laughs> You just got to you just got to get in the pool of Bethesda. Some of you right there, right there for 38 years. What a great passage right there. And he added his roll. A couple rolls have been there. I'm telling you, what are y'all waiting on? Roll. Let's roll an ACN. Let's get busy. Next thing she said, get in the habit of setting goals. You've set goals, but you're not working towards them. You've been saying you're going to be an RD for the last 552 years. You say you're going to be RVP for the last six years. You ain't did jack. Your numbers go back, not up. Oh, my God. And then the last thing I said, she says, activate your potential. Some of you have got so much potential, but you're not activating it. I am hungry. I am moved. I am hungry. I'm uncomfortable. I'm used to being Gates and nice Lambos and Ferraris and Bentleys around me. And now I'm in pickup truck neighborhood. Everybody got a pickup truck around me. It's like, oh, my God. I feel the guy next door does pools. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I am so doggone hungry, I got uncomfortable. You're still comfortable being broke. God, what a message. What a message. It tied right into my Saturday leadership. Oh, my God. I showed you my empty house because I'm uncomfortable. Because I'm too comfortable. I had to get uncomfortable. Oh, my God. Can we give Miss show? Put in the chat, Miss Johnson Bristol. You brought a, excuse my French, but a hell of a message this morning. Woo! -hoo! Put this bad boy in the chat. Come on, comfortable people. Come on, put it in the chat. And I hope it hits you in the heart. I hope it hits you in the head. I hope it kicked you in the pants. I hope it hits you where it really hurt because you're too comfortable. You can't go nowhere there. It's a time to move. But that's the, the oh, my God. Tonight at 6 o'clock, Miss Ismail and Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 Bree Clements, uh, right here, Power Hour. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning. We'll have Vivid on tomorrow morning. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, I'm doing a training, 1 through 10. Come join me in a loving way. Show you how to read it. Show you how to read it. And then tomorrow night at 1 through 10, 